Okay. On behalf of the country team, we want to thank you for this opportunity to give these updates. Here, I want to share with the trainee here and everyone the experience on how Nigeria has worked to promote COVID-19 vaccine demand and the innovative efforts that have been going on in the country to get people vaccinated, how we manage our infodemics, and then how we've been able to restore our routine immunization. We'll just share this thought with the team. And we have this outline here where we'll talk about where we are on the COVID-19 vaccine rollout itself in Nigeria, what we've been doing to promote demand, uh, uh, vaccine demand, what we are doing to also restore routine immunization, how we manage the epidemic, the lessons we have learned and practical advice we'll give, and what we are doing next moving forward. As a country, as of today, <clears throat> we have recorded and confirmed um, 256,958 cases of COVID in the country with about 3,144 deaths. We are also aware of the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic has really affected the PSC system delivery in the country, and a lot of effort has been ongoing to get this corrected. And then as a country, we have developed several indigenous and innovative strategies to accelerate and improve the COVID-19 vaccine of, uh, update since the inception. The country is not just working alone. We are working with all our donors, partners, and every other and stakeholder to roll out the vaccines in our country to develop herd immunity and be able to stop the community transmission of the virus. And the government is also working at the national priority. We work with our federal ministry. So we are targeting reaching at least 70% of eligible persons in the country by December, 2022. We have so far used so many strategies in the phase one. We use what we call the um, teach strategy. And then in the phase two, we are also able to use what we call the optimized care strategy in the country. We have also in the scale strategy, it is more of an innovative and indigenous approach that we use where we look at in the scales, the S is the service delivery, the C is the communication, where the A is the accountability, L is the logistic, E is the electronic management of mediation data, and then the scales of the S is the supportive supervision, where we use this arm, the main bucket to be able to reach out to our health workers, everyone that is responsible, to get this done, and this has so far been able to give us some results. As a country, we've been able to so far reach about 334,345,916 eligible persons with the first dose. This 20% of these persons, uh, translating to about 22,343,792, have been able to be, uh, we have been fully vaccinated. And why we have another 10.7 percent that are partially vaccinated. Just inform the team as a country, we have enough vaccines for now. Not like the case uh, when we started the vaccination. And we want to use the opportunity to thank all the partners, donors have supported us, Gavi, the countries, uh, Western world, US, UK, Europe, and every other person that have been supporting the country to get the vaccine. So we have enough vaccine in country to do the work we need to do. As a government, working with all the stakeholders, we try to monitor the states on a daily basis and post this on their governor's um, post and every other social media for the states to see where they are, where the first five top performing states on a daily basis, we publish it. And this has really generated competition amongst people in the country and has been very helpful. We are also tracking the number of persons we reach out on a daily or monthly basis since the inception of the vaccination on the 5th of March to know when we are going down to be able to institute other measures. And also looking at the routine immunization now, because the other aim was for us to talk about uh, how we've been able to restore routine immunization. We can see since um, 2016, with the mixed mix when we recorded 33%, we were able to institute some interventions, which we'll see later in the next few slides, how we're able to do this. And we can see there's been a progressive improvement in the performance of routine immunization in the country. As at um, 2018, we went up to 50% with the NDHS. 2019, we had 71 with the SMART. And with the uh, pandemic in 2020-2021, the mixed list conducted, we came down to about 56%. Of course, just to mention that uh, a lot more people have expected that there would have been more poor performance compared to more decline in the services compared to what we recorded. But I also also share what we were doing during the pandemic to be able to sustain and still be able to um, achieve 56% for routine immunization. Also to share that we have been able to um, bridge the gap between the administrative coverage and the um, survey coverages in the country. If we look at the index from 2016 again, where we were 33 in um, survey and about 106 in admin, 
we have been working towards reducing that with the uh, strategies we have. And we could see we have really bridged the gap and there's been a significant reduction in the gap between admin and routine vaccination. We also conduct quarterly LQS uh, for the routine immunization. And we can see with, from the inception on in quarter four, 2017, where we have only about 3% of the local government areas in the country achieving the target compared to what we have had now improved about 47%. And you could see even during the pandemic, there was a slight drop. And with the work that are ongoing, the country has been able to also start improving again. This has truly really helped the country monitoring the performance um, on a quarterly basis. And of course, because of uh, time, we did not share the slide on what the, how the individual states are doing, but we're also tracking the individual states, how they are performing from the inception of the LQS till that which has really been very helpful. What have we been doing as a country to promote vaccine demand? A lot. At the initial stage of the COVID-19 lockdown, we had the technical working group and the strategy group established to coordinate the response. And then the team met daily to develop relevant guidelines and uh, SOPs on the preparedness and response to COVID-19 uh, for the health workers at the health facility and the community mobilizers also. And with these training manuals, we were able to train the health workers themselves about 220,000 health workers and over 60,000 community mobilizers we trained with these materials that we developed. We also gave them personal protective equipment to be able to um, do their work and this really helped them to do their work and made them come out. We developed a lot of um, IEC materials and we disseminated this to the public. They were all show public service announcements, animated videos were also shared on the social media and there were also several virtual um, wow. engagement, religious traditional leaders, community opinion leaders and so on. And the strategy group at the national are still also every day also meeting and this has also been very, very helpful to the program. The states have been supported to expand the number of vaccination sites to improve um, access to the COVID-19 vaccine and routine immunization. We have also supported the state um, with additional teams, funds to be able to conduct their mass vaccination site. And we also give them a kind of piece, we give them chairs, tables for the mass vaccination site so that in high population areas, and this has been helpful to bring in more numbers. GIS maps are being used to identify the high density population areas where these mass vaccination sites were set up. And then to sustain the quality of the ongoing vaccination in the country, we have also been able to um, train and deploy uh, senior supervisors to white poor performing states. Um, here we are deploying not just the um, government staff, but also the partners to go along. And these partners and um, staff of the agency, government staff at the national state, are deployed to the identified poor performing areas with specific terms of reference. On a daily basis, these supervisors are tracked with GTS for accountability and also expected to submit the ODK reports for analysis and interventions and need arises. We have also um, student rewards for outstanding monitors and sanctions for those that are found to be wanted. The states and the LGS are also being supported to be part of the supervision. And then for a few other things that we are doing as a country, engaging with these poor performing zones, states, and so on. We have the executive director with senior members of staff and also our partners visit this poor performing state. This is an example of the visit to Enugu State in the Southeast zone. And here also we met with the stakeholders, different stakeholders in this state, from the leadership at the state level to the local government council and the CSOs were being engaged. We also had a town hall meeting. When we go to any state or any zone, we have a town hall meeting with the relevant stakeholders to be able to share what they need to do to get the demand improved. Here also an example of a visit to another state, the Sokoto state, where the executive director with the members of the team with, with the governor. And we're also able to meet with the traditional um, father, the religious leader, Sultan of Sokoto. And this has been helpful in um, mobilizing more people to um, come out for vaccination. The engagement does not just stop at that um, high level. We also engage the leadership of the local government council and the key stakeholders. These are examples of those engagement that went on. Um, we have some areas that have security challenges. We have been able to engage with the military authorities and they are also helping us in reaching out to these persons. We discover also that a pool of the youth in our campuses were not accepting the vaccination. We decided to target this group. Here we are a meeting with the leadership, calling the student union presidents of all 
the higher institutions in Nigeria together, and they were vaccinated publicly, and this encouraged other students to be vaccinated. We are also encouraging and um, engaging celebrities to um, be part of the vaccination. We, are, we also have developed um, and circulated key messages. Uh, we are um, having mass vaccination um, site where there's motorized vehicle around the area to bring people to the site. As a country, we have also have, um, established the um, vaccination site finder where uh, a client that wants to get vaccinated can just log in and be able to know the centers close to him or her and get guardians to go to the place. These are the step-by-step -step, um, processes to get to the vac um, vaccination site when you log into the finder. We have also been able to use the GTS and ODK set up um, of the, and also the joint tax force to be able to um, improve our vaccination. In the GTS, um, this also help us uh, on a daily basis when we deploy our staff, we can track them and know whether they're on the field or not. And when they submit their ODK, we analyze the ODK and get information for intervention. We have set up tax force and those tax force um, attend to issues when there are complaints and they are able to move to the site to ensure that this is solved. Uh, we have also been able to introduce another level of validation where we have validators uh, attached to each of the team. And uh, this sort of prevents card racketeering because once you finish your vaccination, the validator takes your photograph, this photograph goes straight to the server. And when you are to be validated, whether at the airport or any point, you see the details of the person, and this has been helpful. In spite of all this effort that has been ongoing, it's not that the implementation is without challenges. There are a few challenges that have to do with poor coordination in some of the subnational level states that have been identified, and those are the areas that we give um, a preference when we are going for supportive supervision. There's also been um, slow utilization of vaccine in some of the areas due to mostly to the persistent hesitancy from the public. And some of them, when you group more into it, they will tell you no felt need for the vaccination. And these are the group that we really give attention. And then inadequate resources here, we talk about the human resources, of the vaccine distribution and logistic aspect of it, where we are also, and this has impeded on the full implementation of the um, rollout in the country. Um, what we are doing to re restore routine immunization. Here, the advantage we have as a country was that before the lockdown, we had um, a lot of um, structures that we set up. When the mixed mix was conducted in 2026, we had the 3% coverage as a nation. And so the National Emergency Routine Immunization Center was set up at the national to rapidly improve um, the country routine immunization. This was also set up at the state and the local government health council. And the strategy they were using to um, optimize routine immunization was the OIRI strategy where it's the optimized integrated routine immunization services. So the leadership of this national emergency center, the state emergency center, local government centers were part of the COVID-19 technical working group and strategy group at the inception of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so on a daily basis, they were working with the team. It was easy to harmonize the plans of the RI team and the COVID team. And as part of the team, they are also part of the development of the training manuals and the standard operating procedures that we were using as a country. And so this was easy for us to have a document to train the health workers, train those that are for immunization, and then being provided with PPEs, they were also able to go out to get their work done. So the functional um, um, structures that we had, and then the um, training that we gave to them, the uh, provisions of the materials, and being part of the COVID team was responsible for the restoration in routine immunization that we saw and not too significant decline was uh, noted in the country as has been noted by some, some partners. And we here want to thank all our partners donors who supported the country in these times to provide these materials to the country. And again, to mention that knowing where we are coming from and what um, we want to achieve as a country, after several months of implementation, we have now been able to support the state to develop an integrated micro plan and work plan for PSC service delivery. So all the 36 state and the federal capital territories have been supported. We now have a plan. This plan was signed on the 4th of June, and then some of the state already commenced implementation. Here, with the plan that we have integrated have been signed by the state leadership, signed by the national 
We are in the process of signing the integrated plan with our partners and donors who are also supporting the process. The actual implementation of integrated services is currently ongoing in three states of Lagos, Ogun, and Gombe. And we have really seen um, progress in these states with integration services. With our integration services, we are looking at one country, one team, one plan, and one budget. And this has been helpful. And we have the justification of the integration. And because of time, we won't go into that. And then in the integration itself, there are seven key pillars of the integration in the current plan that we have now. The leadership and coordination angle of it, the ACSM component part of it, logistics and supply, the training, service delivery, supportive supervision, and management. So we have integrated services um, being instituted and rolled out in the country. How have we managed the infodemics? This has also been very, very helpful. We appreciate our partners for the support they have given to us. Strengthening the public health response, the health system and global health security depends on improving management of our entire information ecosystem. This has been very helpful. And then improving uh, management of our entire information ecosystem provide opportunity to get the people the right information, the right format from the right messenger and at the right time to promote healthy behaviors and resilience to help misinformation. So we, are, we have a team, this team has been trained and this team goes into the, uh, where there are a lot of misinformation on the social media and every other uh, platform that are available. So there's definitely a need for this social media platform such as the Facebook, the YouTube, the Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter provide this direct access to an unprecedented amount of content and has been used to amplify rumors and questionable information on COVID-19. And looking at all this, there has been a need to adopt the social listening to help understand the conversations around the social media with regard to COVID-19 and be able to address this misinformation. And with the team being supported on this, the results we've had in the country has been very helpful. So on our social listening framework to track, analyze, and manage rumors and meet, we have the social listening ecosystem, we have the trained monitoring, analysis tracking, and then engagement and enjoyment based on the information that is being received. And we have here also the pooling stream, the audience, the tools that is being used for this. So for the pooling stream, we have the online scamming, we have the youth report pooling, we have the web pooling. And for the audience that we target for each of these is also here we can see for the audience for the online scanning is the general public who use social media. And for the youth reporting pool, we use the youth reporters who use the GSM, Facebook, and WhatsApp. And then we here we have about 3.6 million users that we have being part of it and we are engaging and for the web pooling we use the general population who don't have access to the internet and we also have the tools that are available on each of these pooling stream um, for the online scanning we have the media toolkit the hot to the google alerts google train the who es and also for the u reporting the tools we have that we are using the u report the rapid pro and then the rest on so for the description on what happens on each of these, and I know, I hope I have not eaten into my time, there are a lot of description on what we do with each of these media. And the most important thing with this is, for example, giving an instance of the social media pool across the platform. This is an example where once every week we conduct the pool and then the response collated across platform analysis of the pool result is shared with the communication risk center for necessary actions. And this is an example where we shared have you engaged your family and friends to take the COVID-19 vaccine? Here we had 82% um, of them say yes, and then the 11% said no, and then about 7% of them said they have not considered doing that at all. Um, for example, of the social listening findings on vaccine confidence that we collated in the country from 6th of June to 12th of June, this is for example. So this is the daily social listening reports we tell out to specific states here we are looking at these states that we have challenges with the um, new social media and as identified from our social media uh, listening. The states that are most worst affected are Lagos State, Oyo State, Rivers, if Federal Capital Territory, Undo, Kaduna, Kanu Delta, Rivers, and Edo State. So here, uh, by the time we um, do the social listening, these are the kind of results that we, we got for the vaccine confidence, about 50% were positive, while 50% were negative. On the vaccine convenience, we had 50% also were positive, while 50 were negative. And on vaccine complacency, we had only 14% positive, while 86% were negative. Now, the 
positive was a post educating people on adverse following adverse events following nation for COVID-19 vaccination. And then looking at each of these areas, because we go further, we are just showing for the vaccine competency, what we do. Once we get this information, we analyze. And here on this platform, we have complaints that are coming in from people. And this ranges from the issues of um, no fair need to the issues of they are pregnant, they cannot take the vaccine, to the issues of they have been charged for vaccination, to the issues that they know color tunes should not be, or for MTM should not be that of COVID and so on. The information we gather help us to make recommendations, for instance, post on the importance of taking the vaccines and the safety and effectiveness of the vaccines for those who are concerned about um, uh, alphabet events in nation. And then post educating people on the presence of COVID-19 and the need to practice safe and precautionary measures for those who don't believe the COVID-19 exists. And then also disciplinary actions on people that are found wanting based on the information we have also gotten from the platform. For the vaccine confidence also, we have a lot of information that has come in from the social listening where there was a post informing people on the safety of the vaccine for pregnant women. We have some probably mentioned the experience of the swollen arms. We have another person talk of the vaccine that is being used. Some asking if there is still coronavirus in Nigeria. This helped us in taking decision. And for vaccine confidence, convenience, we have had instances of social where there was a comment on the pool storage and poor storage and distribution of COVID-19 vaccine. And then we have had comments that say, when I saw needle, my arm started impairing me, paining me from the last shot. And so on. This information we get from the social media helps us to reach out to these people and plan actions that helps us to um, improve the vaccination. Several lessons have been learned in the course of this implementation. The experiences we are going to share here ranges from that of the fact that, particularly for the primary healthcare system, we have learned that resources are enough, enough yet to achieve universal health coverage and pandemic exposed those gaps. Our health systems need to be better prepared in terms of resources that includes the human, materials, financial need for response. And the result for the, so for the countries need to ensure that they identify and reserve um, and fast track response to emergencies to reduce lag time when there is an emergency, which could be detrimental in curbing the spread. Government at all levels can support the increase in uptake of routine mention vaccine by ensuring that the enabling laws, policies and guidelines, political will and proper funding will help future pandemics if countries really get this done. Ownership, readiness, and community participation at all levels is also critical for the early detection, mitigation, and response to any pandemic. Availability of a functional coordination structure for immunization was helpful as it was immediately expanded to become the COVID-19 technical working group and also the strategic group that we use to meet on a daily basis to discuss and take decisions and actions that we could implement. We also have identified the fact that health workers at the frontline workers in routine mediation service delivery, their knowledge, skills, attitude, and practice to service delivery can increase uptake of the vaccine. If we don't take care of the health workers, they can mar the system. And once they are properly trained and taken care of, they can be assets for the program. And then the expansion of the vaccination side to more vaccination side, the aggressive demand generation for integration of COVID-19 vaccination, and all those vaccination side funders also contributed positively to improvement of the demand uptake in Nigeria. And then improved contact with persons through community engagement, buy-in from our traditional leaders and so on, was helpful also in getting more persons vaccinated. And then the creation of healthy competition amongst the state and reward to best performing state was helpful. Close monitoring and active supportive supervision also boosted accountability. And the use of ETS and ODK made people to go out. The introduction of the electronic management platform also was very useful because it helped us in timely um, reporting and intervention. And then the development partners were very helpful in supporting all the um, technical and on the vaccine also, they were very helpful in every aspect of the introduction in the country. And we appreciate all our donors and partners who were there for us. So as a country, what are our next steps? Our next steps are just to be able to follow up with the support that we are having for the state and keep on working with our partners to get this done, ensure that the social mobilization for resources to get the job done um, is sustained. 
and then leveraging on all the available resources to make sure that we integrate our services. And so for us, we want to, as a conclusion, sharing with the team here, we want to appreciate the organizers of this training for the opportunity to share our Nigerian experience on how we're able to promote vaccine demand during the pandemic and how we are able to sustain our routine mention managing pandemic uh, in times like this. There's need for countries here present, here represented to explore innovative ways to respond to the pandemic and future um, events. We need to be prepared ahead of what is happening. Let's not continue to wait until it happens. Let all countries use the opportunity of resources available for COVID-19 pandemic response to strengthen their health systems and ensure integration of services for optimal performances. On behalf of the team here, we want to say thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to give this update in this great meeting. Thank you. Oh, thank that, you. that was so, wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Vasi. So uh, there's a few questions here related to um, how do you work with um, faith leaders um, and um, and some of the and addressing some of the faith-based um, concerns or or objections that people might have about um, COVID-19 vaccines or other vaccines. What are some strategies that you have um, used to work with faith leaders? Okay. As I mentioned first, I want to once again apologize to the team that we there were interruptions during the updates presentation. We are no deeply sorry. Um, for the faith leaders, right from inception, what we did as a country was to engage all sector, including the faith leaders and the traditional leaders. We had virtual meetings with them. We, at the stage now, started having um, physical meeting with them to engage them, answer their questions. We developed messages for them that they were able to spread to the mosques, the churches, and their followers. And that opportunity that was created to meet with them and answer their question was very helpful. And so they also, some of our partners that are sponsoring the inter uh, uh, faith religions uh, uh, bodies to take out the uh, message of COVID to their followers. So that engagement, physical and virtual, and cutting across all religion and all sector was very helpful because they were able to um, preach in their churches, preach at the mosques, deliver the messages. And the vaccination posts were also set up in the mosques and even in the churches. And um, during fasting that in the past we've had challenges, we had a lot of mosques, churches that were open for people to still vaccinate. Um, the fasting from morning to evening, in the evening, the vaccination site are set up at the mosque and you could see people after breaking their fast going for the vaccination. So we're doing more of the night vaccination in some of these areas for people who were actually fasting. And we had a lot of results that came in from the state on this. So that engagement with the traditional religious leaders has been very, very helpful in improving uptake. Dr. Vasa, I think that's a great example of not just working with trusted messengers, but also working in trusted spaces, you know, where yeah. people gather, where they play, where they pray, or places that people trust and offering vaccine services there yeah. is a great yeah. is a great way to leverage that trust. Um, yeah. So there, there are several questions here about, um, uh, you know, some of the strategies that you might use for very vulnerable populations, either living in conflict areas or uh, refugees, um, or for example, people who are in prisons. Um, what are some of the special strategies that you have tried to reach out to these very vulnerable groups of people? Okay, for the conflict areas, like uh, I shared in one of the slides, you could see us with all our partners meeting with the chief of defense staff for the country, where all the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria were represented. There we presented our apply to them, um, to intervene in the conflict areas. So what they did um, promise us and they have kept to their words is the fact that they have, for instance, the military loan have about 267 medical formations across the country. We have the police have their military formation. We have the Navy have their formation. The other paramilitary have their formation. All these centers will open up for vaccination. In the very difficult areas, the military personnel, medical personnel were the ones that did the training and took the vaccination to the people in those areas. They also were able to, from the engagement, organize outreaches at the barracks, in the conflict areas. They organized health camps. 
So those health camps did not just give COVID-19 vaccine, they offered other medical services and then including the COVID-19 vaccination. So in the conflict areas, the states were supported to develop the security rates plan for their states and this was shared with the military. And the military working with them have been able to work with the state to intervene in those areas. So this has been the situation so far. And again, the other thing we do is, you know, in the security compromise areas, for us as a country, we use four different vaccines for now. We use the AstraZeneca, we use the Johnson & Johnson, we use the Pfizer, and then we also use Moderna. For the conflict area, we go with the single dose vaccine here and there. So once you give them that vaccine, you know that you are not struggling to go for a second dose. So those are some of the strategies we are using working in the security compromise areas. Um, and I, I just wanted to highlight something that you mentioned, which is a strategy that um, I think others can learn from, which is these health camps. Um, I, I saw earlier in the slides, you talked about the single most reason why people are not getting vaccinated. The COVID-19 vaccine is very low risk perception. You know, what's the point of getting COVID-19 vaccine? I don't see this as a threat, but it sounds like adding vaccination to offering other health services is a winning strategy. Um, if that's what the communities need or want, that they might be getting other health services in addition to immunization as well. Yeah, it, it really, you are spot on on that. I'll give you an insight. Remember I shared with us here, we have started the integration of services mm -hmm. and currently Lagos State, Ogun State, Gombe State are integration of services where they take the COVID-19 vaccination, they take the routine medicine vaccination, vitamin A, and the rest are taken along. We discovered that in these states, the vaccination status for COVID-19 was dropping. But you could see in one of the states, they were vaccinating about 2,500 per day before we started the integration. With the integration, they are reaching now about 25,000 per day because the platform is not just for the COVID now. So the caregivers who are bringing their children, we use the opportunity to administer the vaccine to them. So health camps um, and other campaigns like that use opportunity to reach out to more persons with the vaccine. Thank you for that. Um, and I, I know there are a lot of questions, but there are several questions related to some of the infodemic management and social listening and social media work that has been done um, by, your, by your organization. Um, and my question to you is, um, how has um, the strengthened infodemic management or social listening work uh, changed how Nigeria is responding to COVID-19 that might not have happened in, in previous outbreaks of other kinds? What are, what are some of the lessons learned from that experience that you hope to use for routine immunization? Okay, you know, we have a team that team was trained. We thank our donors and partners who supported the training. Um, we have the Communication Crisis Management Center at the national, the state level, and the local government level. So these people were trained. And most importantly, what they do is, we know the platform that people pass this negative information, pass this misinformation. So on a weekly basis, we send out pools to this platform and then we harvest the information. We listen to the social media. We listen to what the comments have come from. The difference before and now is the fact that on a weekly basis, this information received are analyzed and immediate actions taken. Unlike in the past, you know, in the past, we we'll just hear one rumor this, there was no much traction on that. But currently, because the team has been trained on a weekly basis, they collect the information. We know where the issues are. And then the states and local government are supported to intervene. That is the difference, what has happened now. Okay, thank you. And I have one last question, and I'll totally use moderator's prerogative and ask this of you. Out of all of the many, many activities and the many strategies and the many parts of the immunization program and the emergency response that you've talked about, what is the thing that you're most proud of? Looking back at the last two, two and a half years, um, in, in this response mode, what are you most proud of accomplishing or leading or the one activity um, or strategy that you, that you really are proud of? Well, I think the leadership at the agency, the government as a whole and the support from our partners and the boldness to respond was something I'm very proud of as a member of this team. I remember when we had the lockdown, a lot of people did not even want to go anywhere. There were guidelines 
that came out, there should be no outreach, there should be nothing, the hospital should be closed. But we at the NPSDs and our NPSD and our partners, we decided to come out on a daily basis as a strategic group. We met to develop the guidelines. And after we developed this guideline, the SOPs that we developed, guiding the health workers what we needed to do, because we could not fall our hands seeing our facilities being closed. We could not fall our hands seeing our children not being vaccinated. We know there will be an outbreak. So we had to take the bold step to develop those guidelines, the SOPs. Once that was done, we now engage the health workers in training. At the national level, the state level, we had a virtual training. Then when we was at the lower level, we now engage them on one-on-one, -on -one, providing them with um, PPEs, right? So the training, the provision of the required PPEs and the confidence that came from the government side made them to come out to work. For me as a person, I know there were predictions that our ah, the routine nation um, performance will drop to zero. But with the works that we're going on, we could see when we conducted the mixed leaks, eight of the months fell into the period of the lockdown. We could still fall 56% from the mixed leaks. When we turn back and looking at the work, the group all work together. I think it's a thing of pride to be a part of this team, to be supported by the government, to be supported by all our partners to sustain within immunization. And now the pandemic, yes. And with the integration of services, we want to return back to where we were before the pandemic. We had scored 71% by SMART 2019. You could see with the LPS conducted the first quarter this year, we are beginning to come up. We want to surpass where we were. So those efforts to sustain routine nation, the support we've gotten to be able to um, manage our infodemics, and then the vaccines that we have available through donations from Gavi and all the Western world that we are not looking for vaccines is something that we are very happy and grateful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bassi. I hope everybody has taken good notes and uh, in Dr. Bassi's really information packed and very inspirational lecture. Um, when in doubt, as you are thinking through activities and strategy development in the coming weeks in this training, just remember hashtag what would Dr. Bassi do? And just think about him as an inspiration for the work going forward. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Bassi. It was a real privilege having you today. Um, we're very grateful for your time and we know you're very busy. Um, and so again, if anybody wants to feel free to give an applause in the chat um, or in the emojis, it'd be great to see it. Um, thanks again, Dr. Bassi. We're extremely lucky that we were able to benefit from your experience.